One of my favorite things in the world to do is watch Friends. I know it's been off for years and years. It's not even around, but I still find myself binge watching old episodes. And I was thinking about this today and thinking it's the predictability of the friends in the circle, right? You have Chandler with his quirkiness, Monica with her type A of just everything has to be so neat and tidy and organized. It's Phoebe's ability to make you laugh at her silly songs. Ross always comes in with those smart comments and Joey and him and his food, like it is just so hilarious. And of course, Rachel, she just brings everybody together and it's just such this beautiful, cohesive team of people. And it's why I wanted to come on and share with you today that I have an opportunity for you to find your friends in the content creation space. So if you are thinking about creating your first or your next digital course, I don't want you to miss this opportunity because Amy Porterfield just opened the doors for registration for her course, Confident Bootcamp. And I'm actually offering a special bonus for anyone that registers for the course. Course Confident Bootcamp through my special link. So I want you to go to crystalprofit.com forward slash Amy dash bootcamp to register. That's crystalprofit.com forward slash Amy dash bootcamp. And what you're going to find when you get there is I have this special bonus private podcast series. It's called Money Mindset for Creators. So I want you to go register for Amy's bootcamp download the podcast, and immediately start listening to it because what this training is set up to do is to help you get your mind right about monetizing your content, making money so that you can fuel your content creation dreams. So go to crystalprofit.com forward slash Amy dash bootcamp to register for course confident. And I cannot wait for you to find your friends and find the people that will be there for you. Do you see what I did there? Yeah. Nice little friends segue connection. Go to crystalprofit.com forward slash Amy dash bootcamp. And I cannot wait to see you inside. Okay. Let's get into today's episode. Hey everyone, and welcome to the Rookie Life Podcast. I'm your host, Crystal Prophet, and I want to say thank you so much for joining us today for episode 42. Okay, so I'm just going to get right into it. Today, we're talking about self-care in your personal life and in your business. Okay, so everyone's like, this is, this is like a hot topic button, right? Like self-care this and self-care that, and this is how you should do it. This is how you shouldn't do it. Everyone's got their opinion. Well, I have my opinion because um, self-care is something that I neglected for a long time. And if you're in the same boat, I want to give you some guidelines for how to get started with self-care in ways that you can apply this not only in your personal life, but also in your business. Because I think that in order to take care of ourselves and our businesses, we need some guidelines. And maybe you need a helping hand, and I want to be that person for you today. But if you're brand new to The Rookie Life, welcome. Let me tell you about some of the other fun things we talk about here on the podcast. We focus on what it means to start something new even when you have no idea where to begin, how to develop new skills in all areas of your life, and how to find that it factor that'll keep you motivated every single day. So join us as we dive headfirst into what it means to be a rookie. Come on, rookies. We all have to start somewhere. Hey, you. Yeah. You. Yes. Yes, I'm talking to you. Do you see? Yeah. Okay. So are you looking to start a podcast in 2019, but you're thinking, I don't know what I'd talk about. Like, I have no idea even where to get started. Don't, 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 don't even let that thought overwhelm you because guess what? I've done all the work for you. I've actually created a workbook that has 500 podcast ideas for any industry. That's right, 500. 
500. Actually, it's over 500. I think it's like 554 for any kind of podcast. I specifically created this tool for entrepreneurs who aren't sure if podcasting is right for them. They say, well, I have a blank, insert any kind of industry, business. Will a podcast work for me? My answer, 99.99999% of the time is yes, a podcast will totally work for that kind of business. So let's say you're in personal finance or real estate or business or marketing or technology or beauty and fashion or pet services or life coaching or parenting or any other number of industries. I've got you covered. Let me show you some podcast ideas that I have for you to get started. You can go to crystalprofit.com slash 500 podcast ideas. That's crystal with a K, profit with two F's and two T's crystalprofit.com slash 500 podcast ideas and you can grab this free 100% free download today. Hey rookies and welcome back to episode 42. Before we get into everything about self-care and what we're going to talk about today, I wanted to remind you of a couple of things. The first is that we always provide the show notes for each episode. So if you're interested in learning more about any of our guests or any of the amazing things that we talk about here, then visit crystalprofit.com slash podcast. That's crystal with a K, profit with two F's and two T's, and check out the show notes for this week's episode. You'll also find social media links for our guests, and you can continue to follow them and their journeys. The next thing I wanted to remind you is to be sure and subscribe to the show so you don't miss any future episodes. There are always some amazing things coming up around the corner, and I don't want you to miss any of them. And while you're at it, I'd love it if you'd rate and review the show on iTunes. We have a giveaway coming up soon, and we're going to keep choosing random reviewers to receive some really cool Rookie Life merchandise. You can leave a star rating between one and five stars, but here's what you have to do to be considered for one of our drawings. You have to leave some sort of comment. You can say, what you think of the show, or you can tell us your favorite episode, or you can tell us what other topics you want us to talk about. But you have to leave a comment to be considered for one of our drawings. I don't want you to miss out on one of these opportunities to get some really cool stuff because who knows what the prize will be next time. Okay, so now that we've gotten all the business side of things out of the way, let's dive right into self-care for your life and for your business. Okay, everybody, we are just going to dive right into it because self-care is one of those things that I don't think we can talk enough about it because, um, yeah, there's all kinds of self-help things and self-improvement and personal development, but if you don't take the action to create a better life for yourself, then all of your hard work all the amazing things that you're doing or that you want to do, they're going to come to like a screeching halt, either from burnout or a mental breakdown or an emotional breakdown or all of the above. Trust me, I don't say that lightly. That comes from a woman who has experienced all of the things. So um, I laugh about it only because I'm recounting just bad experiences, y'all. Like just being at my wits end. Like I used to yell at my kids all the time and I used to feel awful about myself. And, um, and I've learned a lot of, a lot of things over the years of how I can take care of myself. And so if any of these things can help you, then I think that that's awesome. Mission accomplished. And I hope that you find some insight into the things that I'm going to share with you today. So um, I said we were going to talk about self-care in your life and in your business. So I want to start with your life. And I have four action things, action items um, to challenge you with for each. There's four for your life and four for your business. So eight things total. So let's start with your life. So I'm a big believer in the balance of mind, body, and soul. I used to think that... You know, you could be healthy in your body 
and yeah, your mind is okay, and you don't really need to concentrate on your soul. Like that was like, oh, kind of makes me cringe a little bit saying that out loud because um, the soul stuff is a really big part of my life today. So, um, but yeah, there was a, lo- a long period of a time where I just worked out And I ate, you know, pretty decent and told myself, I'm healthy, I'm healthy, but my mind was not right and my soul was really lacking. It was really just thirsting for stuff that, you know, I couldn't get anywhere else outside of um, some of the daily practices that I do. But I want to start with the mind first. So um, I grew up kind of jealous of the people around me who were readers. I was not a big reader. I remember it was my freshman year. It was the summer before my freshman year of high school. And I wanted to be in honors English. Being a woman in business comes with its own unique set of challenges, but also so many opportunities. We get ahead by leaning in to what makes us different from business as usual. I'm Samantha Hartley, host of Profitable Joyful Consulting, inviting you to a special six-episode series exploring the experience of being a woman in business. You want to hear from women consultants who've hit a million dollars, who sell six-figure engagements, or who've broken their own revenue ceilings? Yeah, those are my clients, and they'll be sharing too. Join me for six must-listen episodes that tackle key challenges for women consultants. Follow Profitable Joyful Consulting on your favorite podcast app. Because all of my friends were, and I had to read The Scarlet Letter. And I had all summer, y'all, and The Scarlet Letter is really not that big of a book. But for me, it was like reading seven sets of encyclopedias. It was just, oh my gosh, I was the Cliff Notes girl. Like, that's all I wanted. I just, I couldn't pay attention. I don't know what it was, but I was just never a reader. And um, so I didn't read the book. I even took like an overseas trip. I went to Australia that summer, and I remember my mom, she was saying, oh, that's like, you're going to be on the plane for so long. You're going to have plenty of time. Like, reading this book, like, it's just... You're going to have tons of time. And this was before smartphones and all the distractions that we have today. I should have read that book. But I did not. And I was not in honors English my freshman year of high school because of that one stupid thing. So, I mean, it's just, yeah. There's, like, I'm mad at my younger self. Like, really? You couldn't have just sucked it up and read the book. So, anyway, (laughs) moving on. Um, Reading... Like being a reader, identifying as a person who reads books is something that I've only recently really accepted. I would say in the last four to five years, I've just become a very avid reader. I I read, um, I kind of slowed down a little bit at the beginning of the year, but I read at least two to three books a month. I'm not like, I don't read a book, like, come on guys, like, I got three kids, I don't have that much time, and I'm the kind of person, if I start reading, I'm asleep in like five minutes, like at night, when I lay down to read, and then I don't want to start reading, because then I'll fall asleep mid-sentence and forget everything that I was reading anyway, so I don't like to read at night, I like to read on the weekends, I'm still doing the whole technology-free thing on Sunday, so I've been making it a point to read more on um, on the weekends, but it's really important to read. I don't care if it's fiction, nonfiction, magazines, blogs, ebooks, whatever. Just read something every single week because taking care of your mind is one of the best things that you can do. And I'm not talking about watching Netflix. That is not a way to take care of your mind. It's just a way for your mind to kind of go numb. And when you read and when you're, you know, studying words and you're growing, and even if it's just fiction, like this isn't just nonfiction, you're still learning things. Maybe you're learning deeper connections about a character or you're, you know, maybe reading a historical piece and you're, you know, there's a lot of facts written into a lot of those books. And so um, it's just a way to expand your mind. I encourage you, read, read, read. I don't care. You can start off with audiobooks. Audiobooks are amazing too. I mean, obviously I'm a huge fan of podcasts and audiobooks are right up there and I like to listen to those whenever 
I'm driving. Um, when we go visit my parents, it's like a four and a half hour drive. And so I will try to listen to an audiobook or a whole bunch of podcasts. So um, that's a great place to get started if you don't identify as a reader and you're saying, I don't have time for that. Everybody can do audiobooks. You can do that when you're folding clothes, washing dishes, working out, whatever the case may be. Audiobooks are an amazing place to get started. Okay, so that's the first part is let's take care of your mind. The next part of self-care is taking care of your body. Remember, we're talking about the mind, body, and soul aspect. So your body, what does this mean? This means working out. I'm not going to tell you you need to work out every single day because that is not realistic for everybody. Um, but I do think that you can work in three workouts a week. The reason why I say that is because I am active anyway. I have three kids. I have a three-year-old who runs everywhere. I chase him all the time. I have two older boys who are in soccer. Well, actually, all three boys are in soccer right now. And, you know, I want to get in the backyard and play with them. So I go play with them in the backyard. We'll go to the park and run around. Um, I'm active with the kids all the time. And then I'm on my feet most hours of the day, either when I'm working or something. So I don't think that you have to work out every single day of the week. But I think if you shoot for three times a week, that's an amazing place to start because the body, when you work out, like I don't work out to lose weight anymore. I work out because mentally those endorphins are like, y'all, I'm addicted to endorphins now. I know that's kind of a funny thing to say, but I am addicted to the feeling that I have after I work out. And I'm so like frustrated with the fact that I still can't run. I have plantar fasciitis, which I've had it for like a year. But if you don't know what that is, um, I have a problem with the heel of my foot, my right foot, and I've had it. I I need to go to the doctor. And like, just bottom line, speaking of self care, I need to go get it checked out. But when you run, and I was up to like five, six, seven miles. That runner's high that you get from all those endorphins after you run, like there's nothing like it. Cycling, you know, I like to cycle. If you follow me on Instagram, I'll post about, you know, I can do anywhere between 30 minutes to an hour on the bike, and it's really close. It's a close second to that runner's high. Those endorphins are just freaking unbelievable. You feel so good about it, and then, yeah, my clothes fit better. And I have a lot more energy. I sleep better at night on days that I work out. Like it's totally this like it all these things work together when it comes to the mind, the body, and the soul. So um, another thing with the body is eating well. Now I don't, I think I've talked about this before, but I have tried every diet under the sun, I feel like. And when I say diet, I mean like a lifestyle diet, not like, oh, I'm going to crash and burn with 500 calories a day. Like I I had a friend that used to do that and I'm just, I've never, I'm an eater. I'm totally an eater. Like that's, I've never been, you know, when those people talk about, oh, I forgot to eat today. I'm like, what are you, I ate seven times while you were telling me that story. Like that's, that's me. I, I never forget to eat. I love food. But, um. I practice the 80-20 rule where 80% of the time I'm eating, you know, salads, healthy sandwiches. I'm, I cook 90% of the time at home. So I know what goes into all of our meals. I don't like a lot of processed foods because of the extra sugar and the extra salt and all that stuff. So, um, I'm a big believer in eating well 80% of the time and then treating yourself 20%. But the key is to not fall off the wagon and stay off. Like, I feel like I do that a lot better than some other people. Um, my husband, he, I think he struggles with this. Like, if we kind of go on, we, we'll call it like a bender. Like, oh, man, like we just totally, you know, we had Mexican food with like the chips and salsa and guacamole and queso and just all the amazing things. And then the next morning... The kids are like, oh, you know, can we have donuts? And then Seth's like, sure, we'll go get donuts. And then it's like, hey, we're going to order pizza. And I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. Like my body 
gets mad at me. And I'm talking about, like, I do not feel good. Like, I just feel like crap. Like, I can tell when I put these crappy foods into my body, it makes me feel awful. No amount of working out will help me overcome how bad, like, foods make me feel when they're just, they're not good for me. So I just, I practice the 80-20 rule. Um, and that looks different for a lot of people. I've done vegetarian like there'll be times where I'll say okay like we're just not going to eat meat for the next few meals and it's fine because we've learned how to I've learned how to cook that way I've tried to be vegetarian I've tried to do vegan I've tried the whole 30 I've tried Atkins I think I did the South Beach diet at one point like I've done everything and I feel like what works for me is eating a ton of fresh vegetables you know Um, I keep frozen vegetables in our freezer all the time. I always have peas, broccoli, corn, or like peas and carrots mix, like whatever. I just always have those on hand. That way it's super easy. So if we have a protein, I'll make some chicken or something, and then we'll have a veggie on the side. Like that's just, that is how I maintain eating like this and being able to continuously eat along the 80-20 rule. Okay, so that's, we've covered the mind, we've covered the body. Now let's talk about the soul. So this is something that, like I said earlier, I really struggled with for many years. I grew up in in an area of the world, we'll call it that, that is known as the Bible Belt. And I, I got burned really bad with some bad religious, tactics I guess if that's what you want to call it just bad just bad things that happened that you know didn't directly have anything to do with me but just kind of made me turn my back on you know going to church and doing a lot of things for many years and then I found myself in a place where um you know I was just in a bad place in my life uh spiritually And I started reaching out, like trying to figure out what was going to work for me and what I needed to do. And it turns out I needed to start journaling. So that is a practice I've been doing for, I want to say since 2013. No, since 2014 is when I really started doing this like as a daily practice. I don't miss a day. Um, It's just something that is part of who I am now. I'm a journaler. I journal every single morning. And then on top of that, I started adding prayer into the mix. And then I also have a gratitude journal. So this is something I do every single day and it feeds my soul. And it may seem like such a simple thing. Like, oh, you know, that's that's nice. You could probably do that every few days and feel good about yourself. But y'all, I'm telling you, I've gotten into this habit so much that if I miss a single day, I'm in a crappy mood the rest of the day and I can't shake it. And it's not like it's something that I can just go like, oh, I didn't do this. Let me go back and, you know, let me go back and do my gratitude, do my prayer, do my journal. Like, no, it's how I need to start my day every single day, every single day. I get up at 5 a.m. Monday through Friday and I do this practice. On Saturdays and Sundays, I get up between 6 and 6.30 And I do my writing practice every single day and it makes the biggest difference in the world because I'm taking care of my soul. So, you know, I I don't even bring religion into it as much as having this quiet time within your own being to be grateful for the things that you have, to write down your thoughts. And y'all, I don't go back and read this stuff that I write. Sometimes I do when I'm looking for something. I'm like, oh, wh- you know, when did that idea, when did that inspiration strike me? You know, and then I've that's been cool to see that. But for the most part, it's just my own crazy that I write in this journal. Maybe it's stuff I don't want to share with anybody else. Maybe it's, you know... Um, I, if I'm confused about something, I've written about the kids, like a situation I don't know how to handle. There was one time where one of the kids, their feelings were hurt really bad. And it made me as like a mama bear. I was so mad at the situation, but I knew I just needed to write it out. And then it helps me sort through my own thoughts. I have weird dreams sometime, like, and I'll go and write my dreams down. 
So it's just kind of like just dumping everything out of my head on onto paper and then it doesn't stick with me throughout the day. It's kind of like, it's like releasing those thoughts out into the world for, you know, whatever purpose. I don't even know, but it's helped me tremendously. So if you're looking for a way to connect deeper, you know, like a soul practice, I highly suggest just start with writing a journal. Okay, so we've covered the mind, body, and soul for your self-care. Now the last one I want to talk about for just your regular personal life is goals. So I know we could talk about goals for your personal life and for your business, but the reason why I want to talk about it for your personal life is because I don't think it's talked about enough. I think that we are constantly inundated with, you got to do this for your business, you got to do this, you got to do that. Like, you know, let's focus on these things. But what about your life goals? And maybe those are tied to your business, but I feel like those should be more important than your business goals. So let me give you an example. My husband, Seth and I, we are like, we want to be 100% debt free. And we would love to own a lake house with a boat. Like, I know that sounds really silly, you know, but that is like, that is a life goal for us. Seth grew up on like right on the water, um, you know, through his middle school years and high school, like he had access to the lake. I grew up, like we went to the lake all the time and it was just so much fun. It's both like this special place where we go to the water, whether we're going camping or we went to school at Texas State University in San Marcos, which is right on the river. And that was one of the reasons why I chose to go to that college was because of the river And I remember when we first started dating, we would go and rent kayaks and we would take him down to the river. I had a dog, I had a schnauzer, his name was Miho. And we would take Miho down there and we would throw the ball around. And it was just, it's just this like place of tranquility and peace for both of us. So that goal is tied to like, it's not this monetary, like showing off kind of thing. Like, oh, we want to say, we are 100% debt free and we own this lake house and we have a cool boat and we have parties there. Like it's nothing like that at all. We want to do that because it would fulfill us on a level that like no money could ever fulfill us. Does that make sense? Like if you were to give us, you know, $20,000, they'd be like, oh, that's awesome. That's great. Or if you said, here is a $20,000 piece of crap condo on a lake somewhere, we would probably take the condo because it fulfills us in a way that the money never could. So I hope that makes sense. But um, just, I want you to concentrate on goals for your life before the goals for your business. Because if you have something that's so deeply rooted in your soul and in your being, like who you want to fundamentally be as a person on this earth, I promise you, your other goals will rise up to meet those. Like you will push yourself harder, stronger, faster, like all the things in your business if you know what your personal goals are. Okay, so just to recap, the self-care in your personal life We've got mind, body, and soul, and goals. Okay, now I want to move into self-care for your business. Okay, and I'm going to run through these kind of quick because I think that there's a lot of really good stuff here, but I don't want to like spend too much time on one thing because I think all of these are weighted pretty equally. Okay, so the first one is margin. Work in margin into your calendar, into your schedule, into your seasons of life, into your workload, all the things that you're doing. I really like the idea of seasons of life. I don't think that a person can sustain being at 100% in whatever they're doing for 365 days a year, right? Like, I don't think that you can be on at 100% 365 days a year. Maybe you can. Maybe you're Superwoman. Maybe you're Wonder Woman. Maybe you are, you know, you're this unicorn of a person, but I can't do it. I can't be at 100% all the time. I need breaks. 
I need mental breaks. And then I need places to recharge and to think creatively. I need places where I can have like an area, like there's a few weeks. So let me give you an example. At the beginning of the year, I went super hard. I relaunched Rookie Podcasting, which is my digital course. And I promoted the heck out of that thing for like a week and a half. That is all I did. It's all I talked about. It's all I concentrated on. And it was like, go, 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 go. And then after that, I started concentrating on the podcast episodes, like the interviews that I've been doing. Y'all, I've been doing interviews for a long time, like the last few weeks. And I have to say, I'm pretty dang proud of myself. Because I've batched so many interviews that I don't think I'm going to have to have a single interview over the entire summer. That's amazing. Like that, that's awesome because, and I intentionally did this to build margin into my summer. Y'all, I'm going to have three kids home with me. I'm still going to work over the summer, but I'm not going to have the free focused time that I do right now. And I understand that. And I think that that's important to recognize where you can build margin in. And the place that I could was over the summer. So I knew if I hustled and busted my butt for a few weeks, I could totally take like more leisure time in the summer. I want to go to the pool with my kids. And I'm not going to apologize about that. Because why am I doing any of this from home anyway? Right? Like why don't I just go get a job? That is a lot easier. I probably wouldn't get to see my kids kids as much. But like, this is the dream for me to be able to do these things from home when I want to create my own schedule. I still want to go work out at the gym three days a week. It's really cool because Noah gets to go with me because he's old enough. He goes in the gym with me. He can just do like the cardio machines. But that's awesome. Like, I want to be able to do those things with my kids, with my family. So Work in that margin into your business. It's so important for self-care. Okay, the next thing is growth. How are you going to grow and develop your business this year? And it might seem like a funny thing because growth and goals, like, yeah, it's all kind of one of the same, but it's really not because goals is something like, you know, okay, this is what you're focused on, but I'm talking about growth. Because maybe your goals aren't always associated with growing. Maybe you want to be consistent. Maybe you want to monetize. Maybe you want to do, like, I want to talk about growth. How are you going to be better next year? How are you going to be further along in what you're doing next year than you are right now here today? That's what I want you to focus on. Because if you look at yourself, like, stop for a second Close your eyes and imagine yourself five years ago. Are you the same person that you were five years ago? Well, if you are, then let's talk about that. Like, you need to be growing. If you're in business, you don't need to have the same appointments that you had five years ago. You don't need to have the same accounting numbers that you did Five years ago, you don't need to have the same email list, the same social media following, or the same exposure, the same page views on your website, all the things like you don't need to have what you had five years ago, because if you do, you're not growing. You're not growing. And I think that you need to concentrate on growing in order to keep moving forward. So concentrating on growth is a big thing. And If you want to talk more, like if you want to get more into like the the gritty details about how you can grow or your progress, um, I still have the spreadsheet for the quarterly review. I know it's past the quarter, but you can still do it right now for the next quarter. It's crystalprofit.com slash quarterly review, and you can go input your numbers and check out your stats from last quarter compared to now, and it's just, it's a great tool to have. Okay, so the second part of self-care in your business is growth. The first one was margin, then we have growth. Now the third one is getting out of your comfort zone. So I have a few examples of things that I've done to get out of my comfort zone. And I just, I wanted to share them with you. And then I'll go back and share with you like a few examples from each one. 
So the first one is go to conferences that you have to invest in that will make you a better person. Okay, so go to conferences you have to invest in that will make you better at your business. The next one is go to networking events where you don't know anybody else. You can't know another single person. If you do, that's cheating. Go to somewhere else. Go to a networking event where you don't know anybody. Start doing things in your business like live videos that make you squirm a little, okay? And then the next one is you grow faster and stronger when you get out of your comfort zone. Okay, so let's go back to the conferences. Okay, I went to the business boutique last year and the year before that, I attended a women's luncheon conference in Arlington with my mom where I got to see um, one of my idols, Carrie Wilkerson. She's amazing. You should go look her up. Um, she's in Arlington, Texas, but she is just phenomenal. And listening to her speak on stage made me a better person. It made me understand her and her business more. And then going to a conference like the Business Boutique, I was way out of my comfort zone. But y'all, so many things that I've Im implemented in my business in the last six months have come directly from that conference. And it has made me a better business owner. It's made me a better mom. It's made me better in so many ways. So just get out of your comfort zone. Invest in something. Even if it's just, you know, something that is $20 a month or $40 a month. Like it doesn't have to be this huge investment, but inv like go to things that kind of get you out of your comfort zone and go do those things. So the next one is going to networking events where you don't know anybody else. So I've done this a few times. I've gone to a few conferences and a few brunches where the first time around, I didn't know anybody, okay? Like not a single person, didn't know them. I had maybe seen them in a Facebook group that was it. Getting to know people face to face, like where you can be knee to knee with someone else is so impactful in your life because you create connections with people that you can't get on the internet. You can't. Sorry, guys. For everyone that has the digital businesses, like you need to be face to face with other people. It makes all the difference in the world. Okay. Start doing things in your business that make you squirm a little. So I was curious about this. Like, when did I do my very first live video? And the first one that I published was in April 2017. You can go to my Facebook page and check it out. It's, I actually didn't watch it. I just looked at the date. It's probably awful. It was probably like a minute and a half because I was so terrified. I, was, I remember my heart racing. My hand was sweating. I was, I was holding my phone. And I just, it was, it was pretty bad. But I actually went live for the first time back in the Periscope days. So if you're not familiar with Periscope, like that's, they, they are who Facebook bought the privileges to use Facebook Live. So it was like the Facebook Live before Facebook Live. And, um, and I did one or two Periscopes and y'all, oh my gosh, I think that was in like 2016 maybe, maybe it was 2015. Oh, it was awful. It was so bad. I think one person might have watched it, but it made me squirm. But now to look at my Facebook Lives that I do today, totally different. Like 360 degrees, like, oh my gosh. Like it's just, it, I'm, I'm not the same person. But it's because I got out of my comfort zone and I tried something new. I love doing live video now. Yeah, it still makes me nervous. I still squirm a little bit, but I've gotten so much better and I can see where I've gotten better and how I've improved. So get out of your comfort zone. I know it's gonna be uncomfortable. It's supposed to be, but that's how you grow, right? You get out of your comfort zone. That is the only way you can grow. Okay, and so the last point I just had is you go, you grow faster and stronger when you get out of your comfort zone. Okay, so let's recap real fast. So self-care for your business, you have adding margin into your life, growth, getting out of your comfort zone, and the last one, and probably the most important, is reinvesting in yourself. And the reason why I say this is the most important is because this was one of the hardest things for me to embrace in my business. Y'all, I'm cheap. 
I've said this before. I used to call myself frugal, but I mean, let's just bottom line, call a spade a spade. I'm cheap. That's what it comes down to. My husband will tell you that. My kids will tell you that. My mom and dad, like friends will, yeah, I'm cheap. Okay. I just own it. I don't even try to deny it. I am cheap. And for a long time, I've just always prided myself in bootstrapping everything in my business. Whether it was, you know, I had a free email service provider and I had a free website and then I had a free this and I knew how to do everything really cheaply or free and I saw that it wasn't really getting me anywhere. I wasn't investing in myself or in my business the way that I am today. And I can tell you it, like the money that I've invested in my business and in myself has directly correlated with the growth that I've seen over the last few months. Because now that I've invested in myself and in my business, I notice the momentum. And here's why. I take myself more seriously. I take my work more seriously. And as a result of that, other people take me more seriously too. Like it's this domino effect. Once you start really believing in yourself and what you're doing and the things like you start seeing this momentum like I got a better email service provider one that I actually have to pay for and I really invested a lot of money in my website I went to conferences that were going to make me better I've invested in digital courses that are going to make me better and I've noticed a big difference like and it, we're not talking about like oh I spent like thirty dollars like I at this point I've invested a few thousand dollars into myself and into my business and where I want to go and the things that I want to do and y'all it's paid off already like I know a year from now it's gonna pay off tenfold but I'm just now getting started and it's paid off tremendously so I really wanted to end on that note because don't forget to reinvest in yourself. Right? Like we spend so much time, so much money, so much energy on everybody else. Don't forget to reinvest in yourself. I think that's one of the number one, like that is the number one takeaway from talking about self care. Don't forget to reinvest in yourself. Okay, so let's recap these one more time. So in your personal life, we talked about mind, body, and soul, and your goals. And then in your business, add in that margin. Focus on growth. Get out of your comfort zone and reinvest in yourself and in your business. I promise, like you won't regret it. You're going to do amazing things. I just know this. 2019 is your year. Y'all, it's only April. You have so much to do and so much yet to accomplish this year. And I know that you can do it. So remember to go to crystalprofit.com slash episode 42 to check out everything that we talked about here today. Subscribe to the show and leave a review. Stay tuned for next week's show. And remember, keep it up, rookies. We all have to start somewhere. Hey, Profit Podcast listeners, thanks for sticking around a little bit after the episode to hear this special message because I want to hear from you. We are starting a new segment called Fan Mail Shoutouts, and I want to hear from you and I want to hear your questions. What do you want to know? What questions have you been dying to ask me? So here's how to make this happen. Go to the app where you're listening to this podcast right now. Go there. I'll wait a second. Okay. Now, once you're there, you're going to see a hyperlink at the top of the episode description that says, send Crystal a text message. And that's all I want you to do. Send me a text. It could be casual, informal. It could be totally anonymous. Or if you want, you can include your name and the name of your podcast or content wherever you are creating. And I will give you a special shout out in an upcoming episode. So again, go to the show notes for where you're listening to this episode right now. And it will say, send Crystal a text message. And I cannot wait to hear from you and give you a shout out in the upcoming segment of Fan Mail Shoutouts.